everyone, I'm Michael from Overland Bound and today we're going to do a walk around of the Overland Bound rig. This is the venerable FJ80 Toyota Land Cruiser. It's a 1996, specifically it is the FZJ model and this does have the factory locker option. Let's walk around and take a look at some of the components. The front bumper is an ARB, that's pretty much standard. You don't want to go to Walmart to get your bumper because if you do, it's just not going to last. This thing is very stout. You can see it does get used. That wasn't a tree. Somebody hit me in a parking lot. I didn't see what it did to their, their car, but you can see it didn't do very much damage to the bumper. But I do use it a lot. You want to protect the front end of your rig. Now the winch is a worn M8000. I know what some of you guys are saying you want more power, but for my use, this does just fine. The cost difference between this and the next winch up is quite significant, and I don't find myself in mud. Now, if you, if you think that you're going to be this deep in mud, you're going to want a better winch because it does take a lot of power to pull you out of mud and snow and other things like that. For me, I'm usually on dry ground and in rocks, and if, if this thing fails, it means I just have to jack myself up out of the rocks and move along anyway. This is not going to help me. The spotlights, those are hella spotlights. They're on different circuits. Most of the time, I just use these two lights. If I need a lot of light, then I turn those spotlights on. The thing about those spotlights is they do tend to splash a lot of light down on the hood, so I only use them when I need to. I've got my CB antenna up here, up front. This also works fantastically as a height indicator. I know if the top of that antenna hits something, I'm not going to make it underneath because of that rack. Okay, these are not clotheslines. These are, <laughs> these are limb risers. And when you're going through the brush, they prevent branches from slapping on the hood. And you can see by the desert pinstriping on the rig that this rig does get used. You see a lot of pretty overland vehicles out there without scratches. I have opinions about that. Uh, this, this is about the level of finish that I like to see. I don't like the dents, but if you see something like this, you know that rig's getting used and that's what they're for. So again, these keep branches from slapping on the hood. Now these are sliders. These are Slee sliders. Go to, go to Slee.com. They've got some great products, especially for the FJ80s. But these sliders are very, very stout. When you're on the trail, you use these all the time. You, you, you will rest the rig on a rock and you will literally slide down the rock until it hits the back tire. These also have armor underneath to protect the bottom of the rig. So these are very stout. Don't buy running boards, don't buy something that's cheap because you'll just bend them up. The other thing is you don't want steps on your slider either because you'll just rip those steps right off when you're going through rocks. The tires are BFG KM2 mud tires. Now the thing about tires, you know, you can go conservative, but these rigs get 13, 12, 13 miles to the gallon. They're not commuter rigs. Get a tire that's aggressive. Get a tire that's going to get you there and back again. These tires are great. Yes, they hum a little bit, but it's not bad at all. I did not notice a big difference in power or fuel economy when I got these tires, and I've had them aired down to about 8 PSI. When they're, when they're aired down that much, they do a fantastic job of crawling over the rocks. Now the rack, that's a Gobi rack. I went with the Safari rack. They also have a Stealth rack, which is a little bit lower profile, but I, I like to have some sides on there to keep things from sliding around. They also give me a little bit more to tie to. It's just a matter of personal preference. That's a great rack. It's got a sunroof cutout so that if I want to, I can remove this and get full use of the sunroof. And no problem walking up here at all. It, it easily supports my weight. These are sand ladders. I got these aftermarket. They're actually aluminum. Um, I might get something like the Max Tracks if I do it again, but these do work great. If you stack them up on top of each other, they will fully support the weight of the vehicle in case you have to go over uh, a large dip or trench. They do a great job in sand too. They give you plenty of traction. Okay, this bumper, um, fairly unique. This is the Hanna Quality Automotive Bumper. 
It's got a lot of armor around the back of the rig, which you need on the FJ80 because it has only a mediocre departure angle and I am always bumping my ass on rocks as I go over the top. You can see this is quarter inch thick steel plate. So no rock is gonna punch through that. It's really quite a bit of armor and it does a great job. It's a dual swing out, so you can access your normal door. It's got a tire mount, keeping the tire outside, you know, out from underneath the rig. You can imagine if you were this deep in mud, what it would be like getting the tire out from under the truck. So you wanna have your tire outside. This is standard equipment. You have to have a high lift jack. Like I said, if you're in a situation where your winch can't help you, you're gonna have to pick up your entire truck, shove rocks under it, and drive over it that way. So you're gonna need a high lift jack, not just a little stock jack. Fuel on the outside, potable water. These are old jerry cans. I really wanna to switch to the Spectres or something else because after a lot of trail use, you can see these cans get little pinholes. The plastic cans don't do that. I just need to replace those. I mount my shovel and my axe on the outside. I'm not really pleased with this shovel and axe combo because you can see it faded right away, right? So I'll probably get a shovel and axe with just wooden handles, but they're quite handy here. You always know where it's at. And this is uh, not only a good tool for digging you out, but it's a, it's a latrine hole digger as well. So it's the first tool you need when you get to your campsite. Okay, the snorkel. Now there's, there's some misconception about a snorkel. I would say fording water is the secondary use of a snorkel. Really what this thing provides is clean air and cool air for the rig. And that's what it needs. Primarily it needs clean air. So this is up out of the dust. If you find yourself in this much water, if that water's moving at all, you're probably gonna be floating. You're rarely gonna be that deep. You don't wanna be that deep. Uh, the snorkel does, however, keep water out of your intake if you are fording through a river crossing with a wake in front of you. So it is a good thing to have that air intake up high. I think that's about it on the outside of the vehicle. Let's take a look inside real quick. Okay, these are those switches for the spotlights. Again, they're wired separately. These are West Marine switches and they are perfect for the factory punch outs. They just snap right in, they're a perfect fit. This is the uh, differential locker so that you can lock the front and rear separately. And if you're really in a bind, you can fully lock the rig lock the front and the rear. You don't want to do that frequently. It is rough on the drivetrain, but when you do, this thing's like a tank. It does a really good job. I've got my CB down here. It's, you know, easy access. There are relatively few mounts for the CB in the Land Cruiser. That's the, the spot I chose. And I also swapped out the stock head unit. I kept the stock head unit, but I swapped it out with an Alpine, a, a current model Alpine so that I have hands-free calling, and I can sync it up with my iPhone for music. The floor mats are from an outfit in Australia, and I can't remember the name, but they absolutely cover the floor. So if you're in here and you're muddy, it doesn't matter. And if you're interested, just contact me and I'll get a hold of the manufacturer for you. But they're great mats, and they cover not only the front, but the rear and the trunk compartment as well. One of the things I like about the Toyota Land Cruiser is that it's got seven seats. That was one of the requirements. I do have a couple of kids and, and often I go out with friends, so I wanna have a lot of seats. And, and when you fill this thing up with people, you just put your stuff on the top of the rig. That's why I've got that rack. But it, you, can, you can seat quite a few people. Just recently I had uh, seven people for four days and we had no problem whatsoever. Here are those mats, still kind of dirty from the, from the last trip, but those mats, uh, again, you can see it covers the entire floor. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and let me know in the comments if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Bye.